this room. Oh, Holy Spirit, feel this room. Oh, yes. Shekinah glory, sweet perfume. I need your presence, Lord. I need you, Holy Spirit. Please fill this room. Oh, Holy Spirit. Oh, feel this room. Oh. One life I make reference to is expressing itself as me. I believe the one life is whole, perfect, and complete. And as I acknowledge and accept and live the one life which is its expressing, it is all whole, perfect, and good. So there's absolutely nothing I need to do but live the life of God and allow the life of God to live as me. That's all I need to do. And as this is my truth, this is the truth for each and every individual gathered here in celebration of the goodness of God expressing itself in so many ways. For truly God is in the midst of all things. God is in the very breath that you are breathing. God is in the very smile that you are observing. God is. And you are. For truly it is done unto us as we believe. And I believe personally that God is in all. For truly there is only the one life and it is the life of God as I said expressing itself in many ways. So I bless the East Bay Church of Religious Science. I bless each and every one of you 
For I know who you are and I know what you are. I bless our senior minister, the Reverend Celeste Frazier, as she surrenders, as she allows spirit to speak through her answer. For I know who she is. I know who she is and I remind her and I remind each and every one of you that God is truly expressing in so many ways. So I'm, I'm blessing her. Because I know and I know that I know the more that I bless, the more I am blessed. And as this is my truth, this is your truth. So bless y'all. Bless. Just bless. Just live a life for blessing and know that God is who we are. So I just give thanks for this truth. I give thanks for the joy, for the hallelujah that I feel in my heart. I give thanks for each one of you. I give thanks for the East Bay Church of Religious Science. I give thanks for truth wherever it's being taught. I give thanks for being able to give thanks. So I'm just giving thanks. As I release these words, I let it go and I let God and I invite you all to join me in anchoring this truth by saying Amen. amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. And so it is. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Oh, yes. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Your presence, Lord. a new territory oh yes there's a new territory there's a new territory oh yes there's a new territory I invite my brother Chris as we continue in the call to prayer. Assalamu alaikum. The words in the Adhan are God is the greatest. God is the greatest. God is the greatest. God is the greatest. There is no God but God. Muhammad is a prophet of God. Muhammad is a prophet of God. Yes. Come to prayer. Come to prayer. Come to success. Come to success. God is the greatest. God is the greatest. There is no God but God. Allah, who Akbar. Allah who Akbar Allah who Akbar Allah who Akbar Ashhadu la ilaha Ashhadu an la ilaha Ashhadu an Muhammad wa Rasulullah Ashhadu an Muhammad wa Rasulullah 
Heil Hasla, Heil Hasla, Heil Hasla, Heil Hasla. Allah, who Akbar? Allah, who Akbar? La ilaha illallah. For there are many ways to get to the truth. But there is only one truth. That is, God is, and we are. And so it is. Good morning, and once again, and welcome to the East Bay Church of Religious Science. My name is Reverend Anthony. And, uh, yeah, yeah, it sure is. <laughs> That's you. <laughs> That's you. Yeah, well, you keep on. <laughs> so let us all stand as we recite the Declaration of Principles. They can be found in a card similar like this in a chair in front of you. And if you're on the front row, I'm sure someone will be of assistance to you. And we read these decorations in unison. And this is uh, what I have chosen to believe how I have chosen to live my life. And they read, We believe in God, the living spirit almighty, one indestructible, absolute, and self-existing cause. This one manifests itself in and through all creation, but is not absorbed by his creation. The manifest universe is the body of God. It is the logical and necessary outcome of the infinite self-knowingness of God. We believe in the individualization of the spirit in us and that all people are individualizations of the one spirit. We believe in the eternality, the immortality, and the continuity of the individual soul forever and ever expanding. We believe that the heaven is within us and that we experience it to the degree that we become conscious of it. We believe the ultimate goal of life to be a complete freedom from all the score of every nature, and that this goal is sure to be attained by all. We believe in the unity of all life, and that the highest God and the innermost God is one God. We believe that God is personal to all who feels this indwelling presence. We believe in the direct revelation of truth through our intuitive and spiritual nature and that anyone may become a revealer of truth who lives in close contact with the indwelling God. We believe that the universal spirit, which is God, operates through a universal mind, which is the law of God, and that we are surrounded by this creative vine, which receives the direct impress of our thought and acts upon it. We believe in the healing of the sick through the power of this mind. We believe in the control of condition through the power of this mind. We believe in the eternal goodness, the eternal loving kindness, and the eternal givenness of life to all. We believe in our own soul, our own spirit, and our own destiny, for we understand that the life we live 
is God, and so it is. Thank you, Reverend Anthony. Good morning. Good morning, beloveds. I'm Reverend Celeste Frazier, spiritual leader of the East Bay Church of Religious Science. It's my joy to welcome you here this morning. And welcome back, Reverend Anthony. So, come on in. Make yourself comfortable. As people are coming in, I just want to pick out two things in the Declaration of Principles that are going to be the focus of the service today. The first is... We believe in the individualization of the spirit in us and that all people are individualizations of the one spirit. And the second is we believe in the eternal goodness, the eternal loving kindness, and the eternal givingness of life to all. To all, not some. So as you come in, if this is your first time, just know that we love you. We're surrounding you with our unconditional love by the nature of our spirit, recognizing the spirit in you. So whatever your background is in terms of religion or no religion at all, whatever your sexuality is or asexuality is, whatever your gender is or non-gender is, whatever your politics are or are not, we welcome you. So that's what unconditional love begins to approach. And even more than that, know that you are appreciated and that your presence matters here. And so I want to invite any of you who are here for the very first time to please stand so that we might confer a blessing upon you. Please remain standing as the congregation raises our hands in your direction and they repeat after me. Welcome to the East Bay Church of Religious Science. We know who you are. You are a unique individualization of love, intelligence, and beauty. You are a special way that God is happening on this planet. We thank God for you. Welcome to the East Bay Church of Religious Science. Please take your seats with honor. May the rose remind you of your own internal beauty. It cannot be denied. May you also pay attention to the packet that you were gifted with. Among the items in there is a letter from me. And most importantly right now is that there's a form. We'd love it if you would fill out your information so that we can stay in touch with you, let you know when special things are happening here at East Bay. We have something for you for every aspect of your life, we believe. If not, let us know, and we'll correct that. But we believe that we are truly community supporting each other, and so we invite you to come as often as you like. But we just appreciate that you came by here today. And so now I would invite all of us to reach out to touch somebody's heart perhaps you'll get their hand or a hug
so as we return to our seats, we're so excited to, 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 to just be here. Well, I'm excited to just be here. And I notice that I recognize all the excitement within you. At this time, I would like to invite Marlon to come with our community opportunities. Thank you. Good morning, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Uh, again, to our first-time visitors, undoubtedly, you have many choices of what to do on Sunday mornings. We are grateful you chose East Bay Church of Religious Science today. Please turn in your completed information sheet at the visitor's table in the fellowship hall and get a free CD of today's service. We love to stay in touch. Thank you for your presence. Our service would not be the same without you here. Are you a member? Please stop by the visitor table in the fellowship hall today and get your questions answered about membership at East Bay. The first quarter new member sessions start today at 1 p.m. and continues January 26 in the community room of the Reverend E. Spiritual Mind and Body Building. Our gratitude tree on the side entrance wall is ready. Donate any amount of money to it and your name will be added as a leaf. The first leaves will arrive soon. Make sure your name is part of East Bay. The name plaque in the back side of the sanctuary chairs can be viewed as somewhat of an example of this idea. Health and wellness ministry. If you would like to discuss health matters or be a part of health solutions here at East Bay, or in the outer community, please join our health and wellness team for their monthly meeting from 1230 to 1 p.m. today in our kitchen area. Let Latino ministry, no habla española, no problema. <laughs> You don't have to speak Spanish <laughs> to be a part of our um, Spanish service. So come to our sanctuary today, 12.30 p.m. for fellowship and spiritual nourishment with like-minded beings via Spanish. The service is followed by potluck at 4 p.m. Also, our Spanish language class Los Alos de los um, Lamentes begins Monday, January 27, from 6.30 to 9.30 p.m. through March the 23rd. Learn the foundation principles of science and mind. Tell friends and associates who use Spanish as their first language mm -hmm. about this opportunity for growth and expansion. Uh, registration is open through February the 3rd. Our winter classes, our exciting winter roster has something for everyone. Prosperity, treatment meditations, Egyptian spirituality, and more. Do go to the education table in the fellowship hall to register there or on the kiosk. One of our classes, the Egyptian uh, Roots of Science and Mind. Discover roots of science and mind and spirit in the ancient teachings of Kemet, uh, Egypt. Study the universality of hermetic principles 
and discover ways of mind expansion. This class will be online by Zoom and in person here at East Bay. The facilitators, rather by Onella um, Von Austin and Dr. Maisha Hazard, are experts in Egyptian spirituality and science of mind. The class meet Tuesdays through February the 4th from 4 to 7 p.m., uh, correction, from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. via Zoom and in person here. The cost is $200. Uh, no books are required, just uh, an open mind. The 4T Prosperity class is a course in prosperity transformation. Thursdays, 7 to 9 p.m., registration today, register rather today to get your materials and time for class. The cost for the 12 CDs and the uh, workbook and activity book is $55. If you have taken uh, the class before and have materials, your cost is uh, $15 uh, and uh, for the activity book. Your tithing in class is part of a divine flow. Registration close, closes um, Thursday, January 23rd. This class continues through April the 2nd. Log in from home via Zoom or come here for uh, the fellowship. Uh, a video is to, to be played. Uh, is it playing? It will. It will be playing uh, to illustrate uh, visually aspects of the 4T class. Until it does. <laughs> <laughs> program. I'm so proud to be the daughter of Stretton Smith, creator and author of the program, and although he is no longer with us on this plane, he and I are still very close. I'm also the director of the 4T program and will be a co-presenter for your study course along with the Reverend Michael Moran, minister at Spiritual Life Center in Sacramento. Michael was a classmate of Stretton's and a dear friend. Stretton was ordained by the Association of Unity Churches and served first as Associate Minister at Christ Unity Church in Sacramento and then as Minister at Unity Church of the Monterey Peninsula. As a well-known Unity Minister, he began teaching students about the riches that God holds in store for each of us and thus the 4T Prosperity Program was created. The program was first presented in a classroom format in 1988 and continues to be a spiritually evolving prosperity course. Because of the 4T program's effectiveness and popularity, we have received many requests for an updated version of the program. I'm thrilled to say that it is now available as Stretton Smith's 4T prosperity program for the 21st century. Stretton was posthumously awarded the Charles Fillmore Award in 1999 for visionary consciousness and dynamic leadership. His vision and work continue to live in the updated version of 4T. I would like to talk with you for a few moments to share with you as much as I can about the 4T Prosperity Program in order for you to determine whether or not this course, whether this concept, is right for you. This program, known as the 4T, is based on the commitment made by you, the student, to tithe of your time, to tithe of your talent, and to tithe of your treasure. And to have that commitment of the financial tithe guaranteed by your ministry for your satisfaction. That is, 
satisfaction guaranteed or your full tithe is refunded. And as a result of that very bold and magical commitment made by you, you will be empowered by the Christ Spirit to experience prosperity in your life. This commitment made by you will extend for a period of 12 weeks, long enough for the essence of the classroom work and the individual work done by you to actually change consciousness, to change the thoughts and feelings of lack and limitation to those of prosperity and abundance, and thus to change your life. The 4T has worked bountifully, and the satisfaction guarantee is a concept that allows you to participate in the idea of tithing risk-free. The more dedicated you are to the spiritual ideas covered in the program, the greater your success. And the success stories of participants have been truly beautiful and inspirational to hear. Virtually all who have participated in the 4T have a better sense of prosperity and thus are able to know a richer, fuller, more abundant life as a result. So let me tell you what this course in prosperity is all about. Precisely, it is about changing your consciousness about prosperity. Not talking about it, not thinking about it, not dreaming about it, not wishing for it, but actually changing your consciousness about it. Doing the nitty-gritty work that is necessary to do in order to change consciousness. Because as you already know, or are soon to learn if you are a beginning truth student, that a changed consciousness about prosperity begets actual prosperity demonstrated out here where we can experience it. If you are interested in having more, then you must learn how to be more. Being prosperous in thoughts and feelings begets actual prosperity, begets spendable prosperity. And all of us are interested in that. But in order to have more, we must learn how to be more in consciousness. During these lessons, I will cover what I believe to be the most basic seven spiritual ideas which you need to understand and to be able to use. There are, of course, many more spiritual ideas than these, but I believe them to be the most important seven with which to deal. They don't work individually. They are all interrelated and interwoven with one another. Knowing and concentrating on any one of them will not create prosperity. It takes time to understand these ideas and to be able to use them. To be able to use them constructively in your life. To create the life that you desire. It takes time. And you must be willing. You must be willing to change your consciousness. You must be willing. Let me be more precise. Through the principles of the 4T, you will learn to release yourself from your old thoughts, from your old beliefs, the beliefs that have produced the current experience. So, let me ask you, is there a stirring within you, a whisper, suggesting a change? Have you had it with your comfort zone? Is there an attitude of complacency being disturbed? The 4T will answer that quiet whisper within you, giving you the courage to change without fear. Your presence here in this workshop meeting would indicate to me, if I were with you, that you are not only desirous of change, but that you are willing. The starting point for any abundance program is the development of a prosperity consciousness. Both lack and abundance are the results of a state of mind. The most important single step you will ever take on the road toward experiencing a more abundant life is the decision to make a commitment to change. Your commitment to change is enhanced and implemented by working with this program about prosperity, not simply taking a class in prosperity. Over a 12-week period of time, the 4T offers several consciousness-changing assignments and techniques which allow the new desirable ideas to come into active consciousness. And the time frame allows you to do the necessary work that is required to do to change consciousness, not merely to understand the ideas about prosperity, but to make those ideas your own. For it 
doesn't make any difference if it's a Charles Fillmore idea, an Eric Butterworth idea, a Napoleon Hill idea, a Stretton Smith idea. It doesn't make any difference in your life until it is your idea. And when it is your idea, your whole world changes before your very eyes. You will have support from others for your new ideas, and you will give support to others for their new ideas. You will be given mind-renewing assignments. The foundation of your success will be effective prayer. A profound yet simplistic approach to prayer will be utilized by you and, and your prayer partners in what I call a prosperity prayer circle. And through using the four T's, that is tithing of time, talent, and treasure, you will learn how to put God first in all that you do and learn that when you do, that the response from God is always good. As Jesus said in Luke, and it will be given to you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. And by these remarks, I hope I am aligning myself with your desire to change your consciousness about prosperity. The 4T Prosperity Program has three rather unique aspects. First, the course is based on the idea of tithing. Tithing of time, talent, and treasure by the student over a 12-week period. These are the four T's. This is a student's commitment to the program. The second unique aspect of the 4T program is that in addition to individual recordings of the 12 lessons on CD, there is a word-for-word -word text of each lesson. As a student in the course, you will use both the senses of hearing and seeing simultaneously for deeper understanding of the material presented. Educators believe that this teaching technique is an effective tool for learning and assimilating information. It is estimated that a student understands and retains 10% of what is heard, 30% of what is read, and 50 to 60% of what is heard and read simultaneously. In addition, the program includes an activities workbook which is a beautiful visual companion to the text and CDs. The workbook lessons parallel the teachings in the text and includes hands-on exercises, illustrations and thought-provoking questions, as well as personal statements, prayer circle partner information, class notes, and self-examinations to stimulate the student's progression through the course. To be a participant in this course, each individual student commits to tithe of his or her time. That is, to attend church services and the prosperity classes weekly, and to meditate daily on the ideas of prosperity during a 12-week period. Each student commits to tithe of their talents, that is, to do some volunteer work for the church or some other volunteer organization during the 12 weeks. And each student commits to tithe of their treasure, that is to tithe 10% of his or her income to the church during the 12 weeks. The underlying reason for the program's success lies in the commitment you make to your tithing of time, talent, and treasure. Willingness to make a commitment and dedication to doing the work of the program brings about a change in consciousness. Your commitment is outlined in my covenant with God. In my very first class in Sacramento, a couple whose family life had not been as wholesome as one would desire had their preteen daughter come up to them in about the 10th or 11th week and she said, I don't know what the two of you are doing, but please keep it up. This family has never been as happy as it has been the last few weeks. Now, that's prosperity and the fullness of life. Also in that very first 4T class in Sacramento, an attorney came up to me after the class and told me that she wanted to become a judge. She was in the process of doing all of the things that were necessary to do in order to qualify for such a position. And I suggested to her that, that she make that her prayer goal and establish a date to be named a judge no later than the 90th day of the class.
in 90 days or before. That was a prayer need that she worked throughout the course, individually and with her prayer partners. She did the outer work that was necessary to do. She did the inner work that was necessary to do. And Governor Duke Magian, then governor of the state of California, called her on the 90th day to appoint her a judge. Now that's prosperity. And now I invite you to join the 4T Prosperity Program in tithing of time, talent, and treasure for the fullness of life. Goodbye, and I bless each of you abundantly. Well, that's a good sampling, a thorough sampling of the 4T Prosperity Class. Hopefully to whet your appetite. There's another class uh, that I would like to announce, and that's treatment and meditation. Um, and it's to establish or reestablish meditation and spiritual mind treatment practices. That's, that's what we're about here. Uh, this uh, accredited class. Thursdays from 6.30 to 9.30 p.m. is facilitated by Arlene King. Um, you must have completed foundations or uh, beyond limits. Registration closes Thursday, January the 23rd. Uh, tuition is 2.25. Payment plans are available and due registered today. Spiritual man. Are you a spiritual male? Would you like to be with like-minded brothers in conversation about your concerns? For engaging dialogue and community, communal um, support, join Reverend Anthony this coming Saturday at 10.30 a.m. in the community room. Peace Circle training. If you were here Friday night for the Peace Circle on gentrification, you know the value of this type of uh, healing work. This coming Saturday, January the 25th, East Bay will host a training for Peace Circle facilitators, 10.30 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. There is no cost for this uh, training, uh, allowing you to bring peace to your community and to learn how to create immediate healing to clear the air, allowing us to raise together with love. Do attend. And, and I thank you so much for your attention. Thank you, Marlon. Uh, congregational song, huh? Reverend Lee, you going to join us? Uh, join me? Let us stand in Paris. You want to lead us?
the 4T class. <laughs> I've been in church all my life, but the one thing I liked about the science of mind is it gave you a methodology mm-hmm. to do all this stuff. Amen. And the hard part about it is to realize that whatever mess I'm in, I created that. That's, that's, that's some bad, you know what the disciples said, this is a bad teaching master. This is hard. I also want to uh, do a shout out for the Spanish ministry. He said 4 o'clock, but the, the luncheon is at 2 o'clock. And I am trying to learn Spanish because part of keeping your marbles as you grow older (laughs) is to learn something new. And when you learn a foreign language, your brain has to learn how to shift. And and I could use that. Let's do our affirmation. God is the only power in my life. Nothing from without can touch the perfect life of God within me. No past experience has power over me. I am a perfect child of God, and nothing that anyone has ever done or said can interfere with my divine inheritance. The power of God is greater than any circumstance in my life. The strength of God is mine to use. Turning away from all feelings of inadequacy, I discover that all that I need is within me right now. As I forgive the past, I find that I have nothing to atone for and nothing to run away from. Casting off the old me, I discover my true self. I take dominion in my life. Old habits have no power over me. Conditions have no power over me. Personalities have no power over me. I take dominion. I am free. I am complete. Now and forevermore. And so it is. Yes. Buenos dias. Repita, por favor. Dios es el único poder en mi vida. Dios es el único poder en mi vida. Nada de afuera. Nada de afuera. Puede tocar. Puede tocar. La vida perfecta de Dios hay dentro de mí. La vida perfecta de Dios hay dentro de mí. Ninguna experiencia pasada tiene poder sobre mí. Ninguna experiencia pasada. Soy una niña perfecta de Dios. Soy una niña perfecta de Dios. Y nada que cualquier haya hecho o dicho. Puede intervenir con mi herencia divina. Puede Intervenir, Puede intervenir con mi herencia divina. Herencia divina. El, poder de Dios El poder de Dios es más fuerte, es más fuerte que cualquier circunstancia en mi vida. Que cualquier circunstancia en mi vida. La fuerza de Dios. Es mía para utilizar, olvidando los sentimientos de insuficiencia. Yo descubro que todo. Lo que, Lo que necesito es dentro de mí, es dentro de mí. en este
este momento. En este momento. Cuando perdone el pasado. Cuando perdone el pasado. Encuentro que no tengo nada. Encuentro que no tengo nada. Para espiar o escapar. Para espiar o escapar. Olvidando mi antigua persona. Olvidando mi antigua persona. Yo descubro. Yo descubro. Mi verdadera persona. Mi verdadera persona. Yo tomo dominio en mi vida. Yo tomo dominio en mi vida. Los hábitos antiguos. Los hábitos no tiene poder sobre mí. No tiene poder sobre mí. Las condiciones. Las condiciones. No tiene poder sobre mí. No tiene poder sobre mí. Las personalidades. Las personalidades. No tiene poder sobre mí. No tiene poder sobre mí. Yo tomo dominio. Yo soy entero, soy libre, soy completa, ahora y para siempre, es así, sí, 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 sí. looking at the time the men's course of the East Bay Church of Religious Science From above, gentle rain from the sky pouring down. Hallelujah. When a nation gives up its sword and decides to study for no more, there's a vision that's happening inside my heart, and right now it's ready to flow. flow. Like the rivers flow, I really want to flow. I really want to fly like the eagle fly so high. I'm ready to fly love with a love so deep, so strong. A love like Jesus all day long. In my heart is a love that's ready to flow. flow. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah, hallelujah. I say Esther. Yeah, she was a praying woman. Hallelujah. Her word was full of faith. Hallelujah. She saw the plan of God everywhere. And it was written up 
move over the place. Hallelujah. But like Esther said, let your heart be strong. Don't set it deep. Don't set it warm no more. Deep down inside, this is my prayer. And right now, I'm ready to flow. Like the river flow. I really want to flow. Fly. Like the eagle flies so high, I'm ready to fly. Yeah. With a love so deep, so strong, a love like Jesus all day long. In the heart is a love that's ready to flow. flow. Hallelujah! Yeah, yeah. Like a Martin oh, dream, flow. flow like the river, yeah. flow. flow, flow like the river, flow. We gonna love, love hey. with a love so yes, deep. Yes, we gonna love, love with a love so deep. We gonna love, love with a love so deep, so strong. A love like Jesus. our bodies after that <laughs> every trip of our lives have started with a beginning thought a thought that we then manifested in other words a dream this will be the day this will be the day with all of God's children will be able to sing with new meaning my country tears of thee, sweet land of liberty of thee I sing, land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride, from every mountainside, let freedom ring, and if America is to be a great nation, this must become true, and so let freedom ring.
noodles fresh and clean. I dreamed of summer and the winds change and peace spread over this land. I dreamed of freedom and the moon rose and the way was easy and the path was clear. I dreamed of freedom and the moon rose and peace spread over the land. I dreamed in the desert. And the night was bright and clear. I dreamed of freedom and the moon rose. Peace, it spread over the land. Bay Men's Chorus. Yeah. Vanessa Wynn on piano. Yeah. Hmm. To speak of a dream is really to speak of a vision. To speak of a dream is really to embody the feeling that that dream brings. To speak of a dream is to enlist everyone and every life that is into an awareness of the power of that dream, the power of that feeling, the power of that truth, the certainty of our belief. And so as I move into my talk today is what the pure in heart see. Because seeing something is, is really calling forth an idea that is already in the mind of God that is making itself evident. And making itself evident happens through me, through you, through us. 
And so when Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King said, I have a dream, it was really about enlisting us in seeing what he sees. And so what we want to be able to know is that he is not the only person who is seeing a life that we want to live. He is not the only person who is wanting a life that is filled with respect, a life that is filled with decency, with justice, with peace. And so we're knowing that the definition of pure is what is true, what is honest, and what is just, what is honorable. So we already have a sense when something moves through our minds and it is not honorable, if we decide to say it anyway or do it anyway, we already know that we've stepped outside of the just, we've stepped outside of the honorable, and we've stepped outside of ourselves, our true selves. Our spirit would not say something that is not honorable, would not feel something that is not honorable. So it is up to us to continue to purify our hearts. What does that mean? To purify our hearts certainly does not mean that when you see mothers being taken out of a home who were homeless that you have no feeling. It certainly doesn't mean when you see people that are fighting in Libya because their economy has been turned upside down, you cannot say that we do not care while the government police are throwing tear gas all into the streets to the point where the reporter had to wear a mask. And so we're knowing that whatever it is we see that is not honorable needs to be impeached. Whatever we see that is not honorable needs to be removed. Whatever is not honorable needs to be displaced. Thoughts are displaced, not people. And so we, we need to know as what Ernest Holmes says, uh, oh, will does not control the heart. Emotions do. So, so if you get something in your head and you're just determined to do it, no matter what, then, then, then that is not what your heart is necessarily calling you to do, but whatever it is that our beliefs have, fo- that we have formed, and we, 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 we put our beliefs all around real pretty like around our fears. And our fears are disguised even by us to the degree that we can't even imagine living without our fears. And no matter how nicely we try to dress them up, that doesn't stop them from being something that is standing in the way of love. And so as, as, as we're being with this, this whole concept, this month of being grounded in principle, we have to know that whatever it is will become to us what we are to it. It will become to us what we are to it. In, in, in other words, Michael, if, if, if somebody shows up in your life doing something crazy, then you got to think about what you were that prompted that experience into your life. Because things don't just happen. They happen just. It, 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 it's called the law of reciprocity. Law of reciprocity, right? So, so, so what goes around comes around. You know that saying. And so, so we're looking at what is it that I can do to purify myself. So first of all, we're saying we're not going to ignore each other. We're not going to ignore each other's plight. No matter how many times we've seen somebody shot down by the police or shot down by the government or shot down whether they're in their home or whether they've been dragged out of their home, that none of that is going to become something that, it, that, that we are immune to, that it doesn't affect our emotions. 
Something is going to happen with us and then what we see from that is not necessarily to be seen as a victim. Right? So, so we don't get to see other people as a victim. We don't get to see ourselves as a victim. But we do turn within. We turn within to see what God sees. We turn within and if you become someone like, like a preacher named Martin, then, then, then what you are called upon to do is to go beyond the conditions and be able to know that this is not the God that I know and this is not God's doing what I see. And because it's not God's doing what I see, I'm listening to what God has to reveal through me. And, and if it is to reveal through me, through speaking something, then I am to know that I am part of a divine plan. And that each person on this planet is part of a divine plan. And there is always something that everybody can do, no matter how small you perceive it to be. Amen. And so, Ernest Holm also tells us that pure spirit exists at the center of all form. Say that with me. Pure spirit exists at the center of all form. So that means there's no judgment necessary. If you believe that pure spirit is in the center of everything, then you would believe that pure spirit is in the center of Donald Trump. That you will believe that pure spirit is in the center of Mitch McConnell. Go ahead and breathe. <laughs> How can it not be? How can it not be? Knowing God, if you say you know God, how can it be that God would just skip over that one? And that one. Unless you believe that God skipped over you and then you need to see a practitioner after the service. I went to see my eye doctor this week so I could have 2020 vision. Just saying. If you want to have 2020 vision, if you want to have 2020 vision, then really be able to see as the pure in heart can see. Now, now, now there's no way that you're going to cross the Pettus Bridge. I don't care how many praying people there are. There's no way that you're going to cross the Pettus Bridge knowing these people are ready to beat you down. Unless there is something that is within you that is assured that this is God's will for me to stand up for justice, for me to stand up for truth, for me to stand up for peace, for me to stand up for equality. And so what I know is that indwelling spirit absolutely lives in the secret place of our lives. That's also a quote from the Science of Mind textbook. Indwelling spirit lives in the secret place of our lives. The thing about secrets, some of them are kept too well. You know, sometimes certain secrets need to get out. Sometimes, I'm not talking about confidentiality when you're, you're counseling or, or you're in a counseling session with somebody. But I'm talking about that secret place. You need to tell somebody about what you heard in the secret place of your, your heart. You have to know that. Because if you, if you live like I'm living, if you're driving like I'm driving, if you're walking like I'm walking, if you're sitting like I'm sitting, and then you saw, you go, doggone it God, you worked that out. <laughs> Didn't you work that out? And all I had to do was say yes. So, so when you really believe that God is able, there is no thing you won't do. Right. Oh, we need to say that. Yeah. Yeah. When you really believe that God is able, there is nothing you won't do. But understand when it is the, the secret place that you're getting this from. Not the ego place. Not the ego place. 
You know, the men were singing about Esther. And, and, and you know, the, 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 the Hebrew Bible is what we call the Old Testament. Yeah. You know, it's, it's got old thinking in it. But, but, but every once in a while you can see some sparks, right? So, so when they were singing about Esther, Esther was a Jew and uh, Haman had decided he wanted all the Jews to be killed because he didn't like Mordecai, who was her uncle, and, but she was married to the king. And the king was feeling her real tough. So, so when she got herself all gustied up and she was standing like at, the, at the, the corridor where he could see her from where he was, you know, she didn't just walk in because you had to get the golden scepter from the king before you were allowed to address him. Yet that's like having an appointment, right? If you don't have an appointment, you don't come see the king. And if you show up, and you don't have an appointment to see the king, I don't care how good your loving is, you might not live to see the next day. But Esther was standing out there and she was, you know, letting him know that she just needed him, right? So, so he was like, what you need, baby? Right? Held up his golden scepter. Come on in. Right? But, but before she even got to that point, she just used the effects for that. Before she even got to that point, she already knew that she could be killed because this Haman, who was like a hero for the king, you know, had decided that he was going to sell the Jews and that when he sold the Jews, they were going to be killed and he wouldn't have to deal with Mordecai and nobody else. But see, but the thing is... Mordecai had just saved the king's life. He just saved the king's life. Shortly before then, he heard some, some soldiers plotting outside the palace, and he passed the word to his niece, Esther, and she let the king know, right? So, so they, they were kind of rough back then. So they, they, well, here's what I don't see now. They would construct these poles like 72 feet high. And they would impale you to the pole. That's how, that's how they did it. They didn't hang you from a tree. They, they stapled you basically to a post. Right? So, so he, that's how he took care of those people that were trying to kill him. But you know what? Haman was really getting in the way of the Jewish people and was going to be responsible for their demise. And so what happened was Mordecai let uh, Esther know. And she said, fast and pray for three days. She said, fast and pray for three days, and I will too. Right? So, so you got you to gotta release putting anything in your body. You got to release putting anything in your mind. And so when you're fasting from those thoughts that are not serving you, and you, if, you get real clear when you think you're going to die too, right? So, so when you're ready to release and not just put anything in, then, then you get clear. You're able to hear your pure heart. You're able to see from your pure heart. And then when she was able to come to see the king, she said, I want you to give a feast for Haman. Mm -hmm. I want you to give a feast for him because um, this is, you know, this is going to be the time when I'll let you know what I really want. Mm -hmm. So the, the king creates a wonderful feast and Haman is bragging. He's thinking, yeah, yeah, I'm all that. And I got all these sons and I, you know, and I've been doing whatever I want to do. But that dog on Mordecai, he's walking around because Mordecai was feeling, he was feeling a lot of, uh, desperation. He had rent his clothes. When you rent your clothes back in those days, that means, you know, you're just grieving. You know, you're just feeling uh, embarrassed and, and ashamed and you just, you just, and he was wailing. You know, wailing is not just like regular crying. That's like, everybody hear you, right? So he said, you know, if it just wasn't for that Mordecai out there wailing, I just got to make sure that, you know, that he, he dies really soon because this is too much. So when, when Esther finally told him, told the king what Haman was going to do, 
he put Haman on the post that uh, was, was really set for Mordecai, that Haman had put up for Mordecai. But see, I don't, I'm not going to give you more the, the, the gross details, but a whole lot of people got killed, but they weren't the Jews that got killed. Because remember, the Jews are telling the story. So... Would you write a story where you get all messed up? Okay, this is what they taught me in ministerial training, I'm just telling you. Whose story is it? It's the Hebrew Bible, right? So, so, so what happened is the, 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 the pure moment that Esther was having, the pure moment where she was getting clear about what, what she was going to do. She was going for broke. She didn't have anything to lose. But, but she went to faith. She went to a place where, where she could really be able to hear the presence of God, to hear the voice of God, to catch God's vision for her life. Ernest Holmes says, we look too far away for reality. And we do. We start looking around to see what other people are doing, you know, noticing, you know, how somebody else is doing something, thinking that we're going to get our answers by seeing what somebody else does. Well, no, because the indwelling spirit has the news that we need. Ernest Holmes says, the news of heaven comes through our own thoughts. The news of heaven comes through our own thought, right? So you're purifying. You're, you're absolutely not ignoring something injustice going on. You're catching the vision that God has, like Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King did, like Esther did. You're catching the vision. You're seeing the possibilities for something greater, there is no way that this man would think that he would have this humongous mo monument and, and everything in, in his likeness. But that wasn't his aim. His aim was to, to be love. His aim was to, to rise together with love. His aim was by rising together with love that we would overcome. It didn't say, I will overcome, that I'm going to do this all by myself. He didn't say, I have a dream and I'll let y'all know what that is after I go ahead and fulfill it. <laughs> he said, we're going to do this together, East Bay. We're going to do this together. So if we have any kind of perception that our community needs to rise above the level where it is, and whether or not you have the patience to listen to a 15-minute video or not, what it means is that we know that we want to prosper. And so whatever part that I need to get from that is what I'm going to get from that. And, and we're not going to say, well, you know, just, you know, uh, I, I'm fine. I got 15 people signed up for 14, but do you think I want to leave you out? Do you think I want to leave you out from being prosperous? So, so when, when you want something for everybody, not just a few, we got enough people that are looking out for a few already. We want to look out for the whole, yes? And so, and so if you forgot about what a pure heart is and you're, you're, you're Mitch McConnell, then you just care about certain people, right? But, but if you are aware that your heart can be purified, then that means that I'm going to have to take some time to be still. I'm going to have to take some time to be present. Mm -hmm. And so whatever it is that, that, that may be going on in the minds of any particular government anywhere where the people are, are not being met with respect, that are not being met with support, we get to take care of each other. We get to take care of our outer community as well. And so when we're, we're able to really be open and available to that, then there is nothing and no one that could come to us with an idea for the greater community that we could ignore. Two things happened this week at East Bay, right here in our very building. So one thing is, 
There's a civil rights director for BART now. Did you know that? The civil rights director for BART says, anybody that has a business, we want to talk to them. We got something for them. Anybody in your community. And I started naming a whole range of, of industries, and they're like, we can work that out. We can do that. We can put them with this company. We can put them with that company. Now, 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 I didn't go to them begging, what can you do for me? I said, wait a minute. They want to make an appointment. They make an appointment with me back in 2019. They're following up, making sure it's still on, all of this. They're coming to us because they're building a new office over here on Webster. And they want to know that the community is with them. I'm like, well, what about safety? What about, what about our congregant that got mugged a few weeks ago? Well, 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 we've got some uniformed ambassadors now, and they're working with our BART police now. I said, well, I need to know that because we need to take care of our people. When, when, when I was over meeting with the people in the Temescal district, and they were talking about in order for Oakland to give them lights, they were going to have to pay more money than they thought, I was willing to help them cut their budget down so that we could have more safety in this block. So, so, so you work together with other people so you can get something greater for the whole, right? So, so when you have a dream that God puts on your heart, it's just not for your family, it's for every family, right? So, so when Dr. King was saying, I have a dream, he was seeing something greater than he had ever realized or experienced in his own life. But he had got a glimpse of it from Mahatma Gandhi in India. He had gone over there and noticed the nonviolent way of being that was revolutionizing India who was being colonized by Britain. Just like we've been colonized by the America. Right? And so, so and, and, and all Americas have been colonized, Central America, you know? And so what, what we're doing is we're saying, you know what? I'm willing to be still and listen to my pure heart because my pure heart will see something greater. Yes. Yes. Friday night, 20 of us sitting in this circle right here in this space. Every race was represented. Every gender was represented. Every sexuality was represented in this circle. Yes, Bathsheba? And did we sit here and did we talk about how we can help our brothers and sisters? Because the topic was gentrification, but the topic was also about compassion and what we can do to be a part of the solution. So anytime God placed any of us here, it wasn't about, well, I'll throw in an extra Michael or I'll throw in an extra Tom or I'll throw in an extra Deborah or I'll throw in an extra Gil or I'll throw in an extra Gabrielle. We were all here to work together, to rise together, to be more who we truly are. Yes. And so what I'm inviting us to understand is that in this season where we are grounding in principle, we can't just leave it here on a Sunday and then want to pick it up next Sunday and forget about it during the week. Every day that we go out, we have to be willing to see through our pure eyes. And so if we are looking at somebody on the side of the road and say, well, well I wonder why they couldn't get it together. Or, or we looking at somebody in the, in the road, well, maybe do you want some of this sandwich? Or if it's not cash, something. Don't leave life not giving life nothing. You are here. Yeah. Don't leave life giving life nothing. You are here to give life from the substance of who you are because the substance of who you are gave it to you to share. Share your dream. Share your vision. Share what God revealed to you so that you can fulfill it by your life. It's one thing to say as that God is, and, and one thing to say that God is in me, and one thing to say that God is in you. It's another thing to live it. So living like God is in me is that I am able to see me when I see you. 
Living like God is in you is saying, I am willing to know that there is something great in you, Mark. I'm willing to see that something powerful is in you, Mark. I am knowing that whatever is animating you is doing it for your highest and best good, Mark. And I'm knowing that whatever these circumstances or conditions are that have thrown you off your kilter, that that's just an opportunity for you to use some skills that you haven't used yet. A challenge is an opportunity for you to use a muscle that has not been used. A challenge is an opportunity for you to step into your faith, not just talk about your faith. A challenge is an opportunity for you to be able to not only see something greater for your life, but be something greater for your life. And be something greater for all of life. So the little 16-year-old Greta who's going around the world trying to save the planet is autistic. And so we're not focusing on her, her, her particular condition because even in her condition, there's a blessing because she don't care what anybody thinks. She's just following her heart. So if the president or anybody else decides to pick on what they're perceiving as a flaw, they're missing who she is. Don't let anybody miss who you are. Make sure it's clear to them who you are. And the way that they know who you are is by you listening to the spirit within and saying yes to it, not only in verbiage, in mouth, in in, in lip service, but in your actions. So if God is calling you to do something, know that there's something wonderful for you. I, 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 I was thinking, you know, I really need to bring, bring my work out this year. I really want to bring my work out this year. Not one, but two people from Chicago reaching out. We're looking for black female filmmakers. You know, send us your stuff. Right, right, right. I, I, I wasn't even thinking about doing anything in Chicago. Right? I was just like, okay. Right? You know, I said I wanted to do some more exercising. So I'm out here trying to, you know, move, find the films and stuff and pull them out of my storage. And there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a five pound barbell and it's, it, it got, got separated from the other one. And, and I'm picking it up and putting it where it belongs. I'm like, oh, God found a way for me to exercise by picking up that weight. You gotta notice. You got to notice when you're getting opportunities to reveal what you said that you wanted for your life. You got to trust that God will show it to you. And don't miss it. Don't fall asleep. Don't be so preoccupied with doing something the ego's leading you to do that you can't see what's showing up in this present moment. Right? The pure in heart see what's greatest for you them and what's greatest for the world. I invite you to listen to your heart, listen to the presence, listen to that secret place so that you may bless this thing called life. Namaste. I didn't plan that either, so there you go. Well, our practitioner student is bringing up the treatment box. This is part of her training. Thank you, Tony. As we prepare for prayer, as the ministers and practitioners stand with me, I know that this life is the life of God, that I am an individualized expression of it, that I get to reveal it. And as I know this is true for me, I know this is true for everyone here present. I know that God sees us as holy, whole, perfectly perfect, and completely complete. And just as we pray for Reverend E's grandson, Gabriel, we're knowing that, yes, there's some improvement that's happening with him. And yes, we're continuing to hold him in the light. Yes, we're continuing to know something more about the activities of his kidneys. So, so we're remembering that whatever brought him to this condition, what matters now is that people love him and care about him and they want him here. Yes. And that which is within him wants him to be here or else he would not still be here. 
For we're knowing that the kidneys are absolutely essential for our well-being. So we bless him now as he goes through his dialysis treatment three times a week. We bless him as his body temple aligns with his highest and best good. We bless him knowing that his spirit is whole and that his mental body, his emotional body, and his physical body are being informed by the spirit of him to reveal to him his highest and best good. And so I'm knowing that for anyone who has placed anything in the treatment box around health or wholeness, that, that we're surrounding each one of them with loving grace. That we're knowing that whatever the condition is, it's just a wake-up call. It's just an opportunity for us to get aligned with what is real so that we can penetrate through whatever that condition is that has shown up from a fear belief, from an old belief, from an unconscious belief and now willing to be in conscious awareness of each of them so that they can absolutely remember it for themselves. Yes. And so I'm knowing that anyone who has placed anything in the prayer box around prosperity, that, that God is the source of everything that is, that God will reveal to itself what it needs for its highest expression and God real reveals itself to us because we are each expressions of it so I am knowing whatever forgiveness needs to happen it happens to get out of the way so that poverty doesn't loom over our consciousness forgiveness frees up our energy frees up our space so that we can be accepting of more abundance more prosperity I'm knowing that whoever has placed anything in the prayer box around relationships we're really understanding that we're really willing to be in harmony because harmony is a divine quality that we share with God. And so we know that whatever the conflict is, that harmony can get underneath it and absolutely extract it from our minds, from our thoughts, from our belief system, from our physical body so that we may be in harmony in all of our relationships. And so I'm knowing for anyone who has not placed anything in the prayer box who has any of those, cons uh, of those concerns or anything along those lines, that there is something greater that is emerging and that we are all willing to listen to it. We are all willing to be it. We are all willing to celebrate it. We are all willing to say yes to it. Yes. So in great gratitude, I release my word to law. Law being perfect, I know it is complete. I simply let it be. And so it is. Amen. We're going to move into offertory now. We have ourselves to offer. Whatever we give of our money substance, live streamers, you've got a little sign there that tells you what number to text to. People in the seats, it's 855-979-7388. So we're knowing that whatever apparatus you use, if it's the kiosk, if it's a check, if it's cash, and we have a few other apps that you can use too, but, but whatever works so that you can be in the flow is what we're willing to be in, to be of. We give thanks for an awakened consciousness that allows us to give in a greater way than we've given before. from the storms and the rain and the rain 
Come on, East Bay. I will sing hallelujah. I will sing, oh Lord. I will sing hallelujah, oh Lord. For you are the source of my supply. Lord, I praise, I lift. Thank you, God, for the givingness through each giver. Thank you for all that it does to make our numbers look good for our broker as we continue to move through our refi. Let us know that even this giving, whatever it is, is part of us lowering our costs overall. So what I know is that each and everything which is increasing our expenses like California legislation AB5 that even in that there's something greater for us to know part of our evolution part of our freedom part of our good because we trust it our pure hearts see it we accept the blessings that are seen and we especially accept the blessings that are unseen in gratitude for it all I release my word I let it be and so it, is. so it is. Amen. Thank you, ushers, for your service. We appreciate you. And so we have some big hearts in little bodies. That's our youth. And they should be joining us now. Huh? Snoopy. Y'all at? Kaya, Zuri, and Kamari. Kamara. Okay. So today we worked a little bit on vision map, sorry. And Akaya, you want to speak? Okay. Nature's about flowers. Oh. All right. Nature's and guitar. Yeah. So one of the things that we were talking about is getting grounded. So oh, sure. good afternoon, everyone. Yeah. Good afternoon. So we have a couple more children who decided not to join us, and that is okay. Uh, so today we were talking about being grounded in principle. And um, so our affirmation for today, Gio, would you like to read our affirmation for today? <laughs> would you? No? Come on, Gio. Come on, Gio. So our affirmation today is taking the first step. No, that's not the affirmation. The affirmation today is faith is taking the first step even when you don't see the whole staircase. Yes. That's by Martin Luther King. Yes. And so we talked a little about that and about how we stay grounded in principle. And so Akaya shared her nature and Phoenix is sharing her music. And how do you stay grounded in principle? Share one thing. Um, um, how I share, oh, how Spend I share it. is um, being in nature yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. and going to different places. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So yeah. that was our share today. Thank you. So let's bless our children. Children, those before us and those behind us. Yeah. Children. Those before us and those behind us.
behind us. We feel your presence. We feel your presence. We know you are a gift. We know you are a gift. We hear your vision. We hear your vision. We sense your connection. We sense your connection. We feel your heart. We feel your heart. We know who you are. We know who you are. We appreciate you. We appreciate you. We thank God for you. We thank God for you. And so it is. And so it is. Amen. Thank you. Okay, so we've gonna cl we're going to clear the room for our Spanish service. Those of you who want to stay for the Spanish service are welcome to do so. Those of you who want to be members at East Bay, come on over to the Reverend E. Mind, Body, and Spirit building. We, uh, we have lots of tenants now. We have got um, a yoga studio in front. We've got three uh, therapists, and we've got one more to rent. But that's the Reverend E. Mind, Body, and Spirit Building. If you want to be finding out what it means to be a member at East Bay, come on over there and join Loretha. She'll let you know what all of that is about. Um, there's other things that are going on this week. Don't forget midday meditation. Don't forget uh, classes on Tuesday night is Egyptian Roots. On Thursday night is Treatment and Meditation and 4T Prosperity. Friday nights, uh, Vision Masters, Toastmasters. Saturday, Peace Circle Training. You can even use that with your family. Learn how to do peace in your family. At least get that sense of training so that you can be a blessing. Let's stand for our benediction. Mother God, Father God, genderless God, genderful God, the allness, that which is the source of every expression that is seen, felt, realized, heard, and that which is unheard. Knowing that life has no end, but every opportunity for our growth, development, and unfoldment of our soul continues. We give thanks for every presenter here today, for our music, for our men's chorus, for our pianist. We give thanks for our pulpit assistant, for those holding vigil today. We give thanks for the practitioners waiting to pray with you, pray with you right now to help you anchor this truth so that you can carry it past Monday. We give thanks for every one of us who is saying yes to our own hearts. For we know that that is the way God acts through us and for us. In gratitude for it all, I release my word and I let it be. And so it is. Amen.